Hey guys, Mr. P. In this video, we're going to talk about the search for extraterrestrial life, and we're going to include the idea of the Goldilocks zone. So what is the Goldilocks zone? The Goldilocks zone, which would be the zone in green in this particular picture, contains the properties that would be conducive to supporting life. Planets that can support life must contain water, because as we know, water is fundamental to all things living, which means they must be within the habitable zone. Habitable meaning it's not too close or too far. It is just right in terms of the distance from the sun. And as we'll find out, distance from the sun is going to dictate in a large way whether the planet is habitable or not. So there are different star types and there are different habitable zones associated with those star types. We have in the middle sun-like stars. This would be ours. We have a sun. We have planets around the sun. We have planets both inside of our habitable zone and we have planets outside of our habitable zone. But sun-like stars provide a pretty big habitable zone. There are hotter stars and there are cooler stars than ours. You'll notice that as the temperature of the star increases, the distance from the sun that the habitable area starts is farther away. It does reach farther, but the area associated with a hotter star is bigger in general. Sun-like stars, obviously the temperature is cooled, and so this distance is going to decrease, and then you get into the cooler star range, which means it's even going to shrink farther. Notice that as the temperature of the star decreases, so does the habitable area of that particular star as well. Different types and sizes of stars emit different amounts of heat and radiation. It is really important for you to note that heat, the physical temperature, heat is not the only thing that a star is going to emit. It's actually going to emit ultraviolet radiation as well. And we know that our sun in particular emits UV radiation because that's what gives rise to sunburns. So all solar systems, including ours, the galaxy Milky Way, is huge and vast and contains approximately 100,000 million stars, each possibly acting as the center of a individual solar system. So within our galaxy alone, there is 100,000 million chances that each one of the stars independently is acting as the center of its own solar system. Each of the solar systems could have their own individual planets, and each one of those solar systems has its own habitable zone. If one of or two of those planets within each of the solar systems is contained within the habitable zone or that Goldilocks area, there is a chance that if conditions were right, those particular planets could hold life. The Hubble Space Telescope has shown that our galaxy is only one of 125 billion galaxies in the known portions of the universe, meaning we don't even know all portions of the universe. We just know that of the portion of the universe we know, there are 125 billion galaxies, each of which contain tons of stars, as the previous text box indicated. And within each of those solar systems, there could be a planet within that Goldilocks area. Given the huge numbers of stars, it is reasonable to conclude that Earth is not the only planet in our galaxy or universe that has the conditions necessary to support water and thus life. So, why is Earth so special? Earth is in an orbit that is nearly perfect for water retention to occur. There are suitable temperatures for water to exist as a liquid and sufficient gravity for retaining this water. If the Earth was in a temperature range that was conducive to liquid water, but we weren't big enough to have a gravitational pull to hold the water to the surface or on the planet, then providing temperature or sufficient temperatures isn't good enough. You have to have sufficient temperatures and a big enough gravitational pull to not only support liquid water, but to hold liquid water on the planet. Earth has also developed an atmosphere and magnetic field that protects it from most harmful ionizing radiation being emitted from the sun. Again, there is harmful UV radiation being emitted from our sun, but not only does Earth have conducive temperatures to support life, conducive temperatures to support liquid water, a gravitational pull to hold that liquid water on our planet. It also has an atmosphere, which helps protect us from UV radiation. And in addition, Earth is of the size that allows a suitable gravitational pull to enable water to remain on and just under the surface. That's it for this video. If you learned something, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel. We'll see you later.